Yeah, hi, this is Doug Tallman uh, with another interview with one of the winners from Tuesday night's primary. It's uh, Julie Riley from the, who is, uh, uh, will be running for at large um, on the school board um, in the November election. Um, first off, why do you want the position? Well, I've been an advocate for students with special needs for um, a number of years at MCPS, and, and I'm a parent as well. And I want the position because I want to make sure that um, all students, and I would advocate for all students, but including students with special needs, have a voice on the board and that our families are represented. So uh, how has the last several months of this campaign been? You know, it's, it's been interesting. I filed late. Um, and um, we have gone all over the county to meet voters, um, hear about their concerns, to share um, my vision and my priorities. I've, I've done a lot of campaigning with my son um, and also with my husband, and we've been very much a team in that regard. And it's, it's really been rewarding and gratifying, especially when um, I talk to folks and they might mention that they have a, a child with an IEP or that they perhaps themselves have a learning difference. Um, and that they appreciate that, um, well, again, you know, my platform has a number of priorities that um, making sure that students with special needs have the services they need um, is, you know, one of my priorities. Okay. So um, what do you think that the main issues will be in the next four years for the school board? Well, I think we really need to look at um, ways to address the achievement gap. Um, and when I'm talking about the achievement gap, I'm talking about the fact that um, we have students impacted by poverty or students of color who don't graduate at the same rates, um, and students um, with learning differences as well. And one of my ideas is um, to have student learning plans. Um, and those would provide academic goals, um, include um, social emotional supports, and try to help narrow this gap. Um, Another issue is overcrowding in our schools. We've had a lot of development um, in the county over the years, and we have overcrowded schools, and we need to really um, make sure that we can do our best to address that, get the funding we need from Annapolis and from the county to um, help make sure our schools, that our students aren't in overcrowded schools and that they're appropriately modernized um, and um, not over capacity. Um, the achievement gap has been um, a huge issue with the school system for 15 years, 20 years. Yeah. Um, what is it going to take for there actually be some progress on the achievement gap? I think it's in part a matter of really it being a priority for all parties involved, the schools, uh, the unions, um, the parents, the community, the county council, um, because Funding is an issue always. We all have wonderful ideas when we run, but you know, in order to implement them, we need the appropriate funding. Um, I'm hoping that we can have a pilot program for the student learning plans I mentioned, and perhaps that would be a way that we could make some meaningful progress. Um, of course, money is going to be uh, an issue for, I guess, all of county government, not just the school system. Um, how? Where's the school system going to find the money it needs? It needs to find it from Annapolis and then from our council. Um, and I know uh, I've done advocacy in Annapolis. Um, I've advocated for a couple of bills, special education bills. And I know that the folks in Annapolis and other counties don't always understand that our needs have changed in Montgomery County over the last 10, 15 years, and that we have increasing numbers of students who, for example, are eligible um, for free and reduced meals. We have as many students um, um, in that regard as approximately the total number of DC public school system students. Um, and part of it is a matter of making it really clear that our needs have changed and our needs need to be met here in Montgomery County. I think forging relationships is also important and that's a way to get your message across and I plan to devote myself so fully to this position if I'm fortunate enough to um, sit on the board and I want to create individual relationships with um, the appropriate people in Annapolis or county council members and talk to them about our needs and help give them the facts and the data and the background they need to um, justify and you know provide us with more funding. 
Um, of course, uh, the people are pr uh, um, envisioning, predicting a, a recession in the next couple of years where funding will be even tighter. Um, is the school board prepared to make the kinds of, or as you as a school board member, are you prepared to make the cuts necessary to come in on budget? Well, prediction for a recession. Let's let's see what happens before we start before we start cutting. And there are always ways to address inefficiencies. Um, but I'm prepared to make hard choices. But I'm not prepared right now to say that anything in particular really needs to be cut until I've got data in front of me. I'm, I'm a very sort of data driven person, and uh, I see what's working, what, what could be maybe, you know, made more efficient, and where our money's going and what's producing results. Okay. Do you have any idea of what's not producing results right now? Um, I think, well, you know, go back to the achievement gap. That's something we need to do, to do better on. And we have, and, and it's great, we, we will um, have, um, we fund the schools in different parts of the county a little bit with more equity. We may need to do more of that. But I think we need to have a more student-driven approach um, to the gap. One of the things that ways in which I feel that I can distinguish myself from some of the other uh, candidates that I ran with is that I do not support sort of one-size-fits-all goals. They, they just don't work. We had a forum, for example, in which one of the questions we were asked was, do you support every single student reading on the third grade level in third grade, and if not, you hold the school district responsible. I, I did not support that because that is not a realistic goal. We need, we know that we will have some students. Um, for example, you could have a student with a traumatic brain injury that might not meet that goal. You could have newly arrived English language learners. So this sort of one size fits all goals don't work. They can misdirect time, attention, and resources. Um, and so you could have a student who, instead of learning fundamental life skills, is sort of being the goals or the resources are focused to try to get them to learn on third grade by third grade when that might not be appropriate for that student. Um, and I'm not suggesting we don't want appropriate rigor, but I'm suggesting we need to take a student first approach. Um, I know it's easy in a big county to fall um, into the temptation of saying, for example, we want 100% of the students to graduate. I've heard that number um, raised before. I don't know if those um, who are proponents of that understand that that typically refers to people getting diplomas and not all of our students are diploma bound. Um, if we take a student first approach, we can meet students' needs, we can um, meet their potential um, and recognize that potential and lift that potential, um, but we can do it in a way that we're not too mired in statistics, and we are more focused on the student. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Riley. Uh, this has been another one of our interviews with the winners from Tuesday's primary.